In this video, we're going to study 5.2 stress measures and stress invariance. We're going to study four topics. Hydrostatic stress, deviatoric stress tensor, the von Mises stress, and the maximum shear stress. Given a Cauchy stress tensor, the hydrostatic stress is the average normal stress. It's equal to the trace of the stress matrix sigma on 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 divided by 3. So it's the average normal stress. And remember that the trace or the first invariant of the stress matrix does not change if we change the coordinate system. So this quantity is the same independent of what coordinate system I have. The second stress measure that I want to study is called the deviatoric stress tensor. So I can look at a stress state represented by the stress matrix shown and the cube shown. I can divide it into two additive components. The first component is the hydrostatic component. Basically the seam cubed under a hydrostatic state of stress, P, P is applied on all directions and the value of P is equal to the average of the stresses, sigma on 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 over 3. The second component is the remaining values for the stresses. So they are all the same stresses except the normal components are now sigma 1 minus p, sigma 2 2 minus p, and sigma 3 3 minus p. So when I add those two stress states, when I add them, I get the original stress state. This is called the hydrostatic stress, and this is called the deviatoric stress tensor. And so in matrix, form sigma is equal to pi plus s and s is the deviatoric stress tensor s is equal to sigma minus pi where p is the hydrostatic stress it's the average of the normal stresses the first invariant of s or the trace of s is equal to the trace of sigma minus p multiplied by the trace of i the trace of i is the sum of the diagonal component, which is 3. And we know already that p is equal to i1 of sigma divided by 3. So 3 cancels 3. And so I get that the, the trace of s is equal to 0. The third measure of stress that we uh, are going to study is the von Mises stress. It is one of the invariants of the deviatoric stress tensor. The deviatoric stress tensor is equal to the Cauchy stress tensor minus P multiplied by the identity matrix, where P is the average um, longitudinal stress. So it's equal to sigma on 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 divided by 3. So the components of S are sigma on 1 minus P, sigma 2 2 minus P, and sigma 3 3 minus P in the diagonals, and the off-diagonal components are equal to the shear stress components. The von Mises stress is the square root of negative 3 multiplied by the second invariant of S. And the second invariant has the equation half multiplied by the first invariant squared minus the first invariant of the matrix SS. As shown in the previous slide, the first invariant of S is equal to 0, and so we are left with the square root of 3 over 2 multiplied by the first invariant of the matrix S multiplied by S. So if we take the matrix S and multiply it by itself and then take the first invariant of the resulting matrix, multiply by 3 divided by 2, then take the square root, substitute for P sigma on 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 over 3, we get, we get a large equation function of all the stress components. In a general chord system, this equation has the following form. Sigma von Mises is equal to the square root of 1 over 2 multiplied by sigma on 1 minus sigma 2 2 squared, sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 squared, sigma on 1 minus sigma 3 3 squared plus 6, sigma on 2 squared plus sigma on 3 squared plus sigma 2 3 squared. If we're looking at the uh, stress matrix in its diagonal form in the coordinate system in which we only have principal stresses, then the von Mises stress would take the form square root of 
sigma 1 minus sigma 2 squared, sigma 2 minus sigma 3 squared, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 squared, all divided by 2. The fourth measure of stress that I want to study is called the maximum shear stress. So I know that in general, this is the stress matrix in this coordinate system. If I change it to a new coordinate system, a new orientation, the stress matrix has this form, sigma prime 1, 1, sigma prime 1, 2, and so on, where this new state, the matrix is obtained by multiplying Q by sigma by Q transpose. The question is, what is the orientation that would maximize sigma prime 1, 2, or sigma prime 1, 3, or sigma prime 2, 3? What is the orientation that would give me a maximum component for one of those shear stresses? The value of the maximum shear stress can be obtained by finding the principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, and then finding the maximum difference and dividing that maximum difference by 2. So the maximum shear is the maximum of one of three components, either the difference between sigma 1 and sigma 2, the difference between sigma 2 and sigma 3, or the difference between sigma 1 and sigma 3, whichever is highest, divided by 2. So this is the maximum shear. That maximum shear is obtained by reorienting the cube by an angle 45 degrees in the plane with the maximum difference between the principal stress components. So for example, if the difference between sigma 1 and sigma 2 is the highest, then I'm going to reorient the cube by 45 degrees in the plane of E1 and E2. In this new coordinate system, the, of course, the change of coordinate system matrix Q it has this form, cosine 45, sine 45, negative sine 45, cosine 45. The new components of the stress are now the normal stress, sigma 1 plus sigma 2 over 2, sigma 1 plus sigma 2 over 2. The shear stresses are equal to sigma 2 minus sigma 1 over 2. And this is the maximum value of the shear stress. So it's sigma 1 minus sigma 2, or the absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2. And is obtained, again, by reorienting the cube from the principal stresses, rotating it 45 degrees in the plane with the maximum difference. Why 45 degrees? This can be shown here. If I assume a stress matrix of this form that has components sigma 1, sigma 2, and the rest are zeros, if I put a general rotation, Q, cosine theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cosine theta, and if I calculate sigma prime as Q, sigma Q transpose, then we're looking for the value of theta that would make the shear stress sigma 2 minus sigma 1 sine theta cosine theta maximum. And whenever I have sine theta cosine theta multiplied by each other, it's generally known that the maximum is obtained at 45 degrees, but we'll show it as well. We can find this maximum by differentiating this component, the shear component, with respect to theta and setting it equal to zero. In that case, you'll find that cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta for that differentiation to be equal to zero, which means theta is multiples of 45 degrees, which means to maximize the shear stress, you need to rotate the axes by 45 degrees from the principal stress state. In that case, the shear stress, or the maximum shear stress that's calculated, is equal to the difference between sigma 2 and sigma 1, multiplied by sine 45 cosine 45. 1 over root 2 multiplied by 1 over root 2 is, is 1 over 2, and therefore the maximum shear stress is the, is the maximum difference divided by 2. If the biggest difference is sigma 2 minus sigma 1, then the maximum shear stress orientation is obtained using the shown Q which is basically rotating E1 and E2 by 45 degrees. If the biggest difference is between sigma 3 and sigma 2, then the maximum shear stress orientation is obtained by rotating E2 and E3 by 45 degrees. And so we have to use the shown Q. If the biggest difference is between sigma 3 and sigma 1, then we need to rotate E3 and E1 by 45 degrees using the shown Q. On the website, there's a tool where given a stress matrix, first, it calculates the principal stresses and the principal directions, reorients the cube to the principal directions, 
using the eigenvectors of the stress and now the new stress matrix in the new coin system is made out of a diagonal matrix from this new orientation I reorient the cube rotated by an extra 45 degrees so I apply another Q2 and so the new sigma double prime is equal to Q2 multiplied by sigma prime multiplied by Q2 transpose I get a new stress matrix in the new coordinate system I get the maximum possible value for the shear stress so this state the third state is 45 degrees from the principal straight. So this is 45 degrees rotation. There is another tool on the website that does it also for 3D, given a 3 by 3 stress matrix. First, the tool draws it in the current coordinate system, and then from the current coordinate system, the cube is reoriented along the principal directions. In the principal directions, when the cube is aligned with the principal directions, the principal stresses are the only stress components available. The rest are zeros. From that, I find the maximum difference. The maximum difference is, in fact, between sigma 1 and sigma 2. The maximum difference is between sigma 1 and sigma 2. So I use the Q shown in the previous slides, I just rotate E1 and E2 by 45 degrees, and in that new current system, I get the maximum possible shear stress, which is equal to the maximum difference divided by 2.